the way that we can calculate equilibrium potentials is by using what's called the Nernst equation. The Nernst equation is um, something that takes into account the concentration differences outside versus inside the cell, and it also takes into account the magnitude of the charge. This Z right here, this is referring to the valence of the ion. So this is why we spent some time back at the beginning of the semester when we were going over chemistry, we spent some time thinking about ions and what is the charge that they are most likely um, to exhibit. So remember that for ions in general, they like to have a complete outer valence shell of electrons, and that helps us to figure out what is the valence charge for an ion. In the case of both potassium and sodium, that valence charge is plus one. They tend to give up one electron, and so they end up with a charge of plus one. And so let's just see if we can give this equation a try. We'll start with potassium. And I'm just going to work in the margin here of my screen. I think I've got enough space. So if we were trying to calculate the equilibrium potential for potassium ions, what we would say is E subscript K plus for potassium ions. That's just noting which ion we're talking about. That equilibrium potential is going to be equal to, and I'll write out my expression here, just the number 61. This is something that is, um, you, you can just take it as a given. It's something that can be calculated from, um, based on the, for example, the temperature that we're working at. So we're just gonna be assuming that we're talking about normal human body temperature. And based on that calculation, you would get the number 61. Uh, I won't be expecting you to, to do that calculation. We're just gonna take this 61 as a given. Uh, so 61 divided by, and then I've got to figure out what is the valence of this ion that I'm interested in. So for potassium, we already know that its charge, its valence charge tends to be plus one. So Z, the value for Z is just going to be plus one. Okay, and then we're going to multiply that by the log of a ratio. We're going to take the ratio of two concentration values. I need to know what is the concentration of potassium ions outside of the cell. That's going to be my numerator. And I'm going to divide by the concentration inside of the cell. So let me just back up for a moment and we can grab those values off the previous slide. For potassium, our concentration outside of the cell is 5 millimolar. And our concentration inside of the cell is 150 millimolar. So I'm going to grab both of those values and put them in here. Notice that the units actually are not going to matter. The units cancel. So as long as my units are consistent in these two measurements, it doesn't actually matter what units I've used. I could have used molar instead of millimolar, and we'd still end up coming to the same end result. So at this point, you would need to grab your calculator, go ahead and plug all of these values in. Um, so again, the, the units here, I'm just gonna cross them off because they cancel. So what we should be doing is taking the number 61 times the log of um, five over 150. And remember with calculators, you might need to be a little bit careful with parentheses. You'll probably need parentheses around the, um, the five over 150, just to make sure that that whole thing is included in the log calculation. And once you've done that, do take a moment, pause the video if you need to, try out that calculation. What you should get in the end is a value of minus 90. And standard units for equilibrium potentials are going to be millivolts. So minus 90 millivolts. And that does indeed match up with what we just said a moment ago back on this slide that I kind of just threw this number out there initially. The value was minus 90 millivolts for the equilibrium potential of potassium. Now we've just calculated it. We used the Nernst equation to calculate that value. Let's give this a try for sodium. I'll do that over here on the right hand side. So equilibrium potential for sodium, which is Na plus sodium ions, is going to be equal to 61 over the valence of the ion, which again in this case happens to just be plus one. So that's not actually going to really influence our calculation. 
it's just the number one. Um, so 61 times the log of ratio of the concentrations. I always need to be careful what am I putting in the numerator versus in the denominator. The numerator inside of the log, this always needs to be the concentration outside of the cell. So I'm going to be careful about that. I'll go back to the previous slide and check for sodium. Sodium outside of the cell, the concentration is 145 millimolar. So 145 divided by concentration inside of the cell, which is 12. Okay. And those concentration values, if we just come back and, and think about things that we've been learning previously, let's make sure this is all sort of meshing up together. So remember sodium potassium pumps, they pump sodium outside of the cell three at a time and they pump potassium inside of the cell. So it makes sense that these concentration differences are what they are. There's more sodium outside and more potassium inside. So again, for the equilibrium potential for sodium ions, um, in the concentrations here in the log, those, those units will just cancel. So we can go ahead and cross those out. And if you put this into your calculator, 61 times the log of 145 over 12, what you should get is a value of 66. And this one is actually going to be positive 66. Okay, so positive, I'm gonna actually put the plus sign there, 66. And then again, the standard units are millivolts. So very different equilibrium potentials for those two ions. In practice, both of these ions are present, of course, and so it's going to end up being kind of the balance of these is what we're going to be considering in terms of the cell's overall potential difference from inside to outside. Do recommend definitely give these calculations a try in your own calculator. Even if you understand the concept of the math and it seems simple, sometimes just the process of, of um, plugging it into your own calculator, finding the right buttons, making sure that you can get to the same answer, uh, that's an important thing. Make sure that you can do this so that you would be able to perhaps perform this calculation for other ions if asked to do so. We've been thinking about individual ions, kind of considering them one at a time. Let's go ahead and move on to the bigger picture. We're gonna be talking about the net membrane potential, which is essentially considering all of the ions that are present together. And that net membrane potential, it's going to depend on the ratio of ion concentrations uh, for, for each of these ions, there are essentially four key ions. The, the four that I showed on the uh, couple of slides back showing the concentration differences. So we've got potassium, sodium, calcium, and chloride ions. All of these are key contributors to the overall net uh, membrane potential that cells have. And the balance of all of these things provides what's called the resting potential for a cell. It's just kind of like the, the balance that usually prevails That's the, of, um, in terms of the net membrane potential. So if the concentration of any of these four changes significantly, that's going to end up changing the resting potential. And why would this happen? Well, it turns out that cells can modify the permeability of the membrane to specific ions. And this is something that is going to be very useful to cells. Cells can send signals in this way by, by doing this modification. A perfect example is what's coming up for us. We're gonna be spending some time on the nervous system and how neurons work, how nerve cells work, um, is essentially they send a signal by changing the permeability of sodium. So we're gonna be seeing this quite a bit going forward. What I'd like for you to do right now is get in mind uh, this normal range. So typically for most cells, what is this net membrane potential when a cell is at rest? Typically the resting membrane potential is from negative 65 to negative 85 millivolts. And again, I just wanna get this down right now. Uh, what is the negative talking about? This is saying inside is more negative than outside. That's all that negative is including, uh, or is indicating rather. And so this is a typical range. Usually for neurons, the resting value is minus 70. So within that range. 
And what we're going to be looking at in subsequent chapters is fluctuations away from this value when we're talking about nerve signaling going on. This slide does a nice job of recapping some things. If you're more of a sort of a pictorial or figure, figure learner, uh, this is essentially saying what we just went through in words. So the fact that cells have unequal permeabilities to different ions and the fact that cells have um, fixed molecules that perhaps are negatively charged inside and due to the fact that we have these sorts of pumps that, that move ions around, all of that put together ends up leading to an uneven distribution of ions. And uh, the primary contributors are sodium and potassium to this unequal distribution. And if we consider the balance of all of these ions, that provides the cell with what's called a resting membrane potential. The potential difference when a cell is at rest, and that resting membrane potential is usually about minus 70 millivolts. So that's a number to know going forward.